MSM is Empire Fanfic for Children. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. April 2022. Zelensky speaks at the Grammy Awards. May 2022. Zelensky speaks at Cannes Film Festival. June 2022. Zelensky hosts SNL. July 2022. Zelensky stars as himself in action biopic co-starring The Rock. August 2022. Zelensky releases his own breakfast cereal and clothing line. September 2022. Celebrities are flocking to the new Hollywood pop religion known as Zelenskyology. It's often a long, awkward process, learning that literally everyone in both mainstream political factions serves the oligarchic empire. For most people, you have to get your hopes dashed over and over again by your heroes before learning this lesson. And even then, many don't. It runs counter to everything you're taught in life that nobody in either camp is there to help you. There's a fundamental assumption that someone among them must be decent. But if you watch carefully, with enough intellectual honesty, you'll see it again and again. A line that, for one justification or another, none of them can ever end up crossing. And it's the line where they would have to begin providing meaningful opposition to the oligarchic empire. At first, it makes no sense. How can there be no good guys? Not one. Then you realize, it's because you're living in an oligarchic empire which only elevates people who serve its interests, whether it's in politics, government, or media. The opposition between mainstream factions is an illusion cooked up by the empire and continually reinforced by its narrative managers. But you only see this if you are intellectually honest enough to overcome your own cognitive biases. Otherwise, you'll keep doing mental gymnastics to justify the bullshit coming from Bernie, AOC, TYT, Tucker Carlson, Trump, MAGA pundits, wherever your biases are located on the map. And then when you see it, people accuse you of being an angry hater who doesn't have anything positive to say about anyone in politics or media, when really it's got nothing to do with being negative but with your understanding that the machine always protects the machine. This proxy war isn't about defending Ukraine. It's about quashing a nation which has consistently resisted absorption into the U.S. centralized imperial blob. That agenda is best served by keeping this war going as long as possible and making it as grueling and costly as possible for Moscow. Peace is not on the menu. Even if Ukraine does somehow achieve total victory in the near term, it wouldn't mean peace, it would mean more war. If Russia is driven out, the war will just change shape into a concerted effort to oust Putin and shatter the Russian Federation. This war could easily have been avoided with a little diplomacy and low-cost, high-reward concessions. The U.S. had good visibility into the Kremlin's plans, so they knew this. They chose not to because they wanted to use this war to hurt Putin. A massive percentage of the people who are getting Russia and Ukraine right are going to turn into the worst people in the world once conflict shifts to China. Pretty much only the anti-imperialist left and a specific subset of anti-war libertarians will get both issues entirely correct. I get asked if I think the U.S. should do anything if China attacks Taiwan. I tell them I don't think the U.S. should do anything if any nation does anything. The U.S. is the very last nation on earth that should ever do anything about any other nation. We don't talk enough about how disturbing it is that Silicon Valley megacorporations have just accepted that it's their job to help the U.S. win a propaganda war against Russia and everyone's just going along with that like it's fine and normal. Man steals most of everyone's wealth. Everyone. Hey, give that back! Man, you're all just jealous of my success. Can't believe empire managers have the gall to keep babbling about disinformation even as they work to extradite a journalist to the United States to defend the empire's right to lie to us about its war crimes. 
I've met some cute kids in my time, but nobody's as adorable as people who think Assange can get a fair Espionage Act trial in the United States of America. I want to live in this idyllic fantasy world where the U.S. pours weapons into a foreign nation because it cares deeply about their freedom and orchestrates the military encirclement of Russia and China because it wants to protect the world from tyranny. The mainstream news media is empire fanfic for slow kids. Your average Ivy League graduate working for a prominent military-industrial complex-funded think tank has less insight into what's happening with Russia and China than your average random citizen with internet access and sincere curiosity about those nations. People who've escaped abusive relationships with bitchy, vindictive, passive-aggressive manipulators have a natural advantage when it comes to deciphering the malevolence of the U.S. empire.